Matt. Um, and speaking of learning a lot, Eric Brynjolfsson, who comes up next, is somebody who, you know, last year uh, with his partner Andy McAfee published a book about what's happening with jobs and kind of concerned me uh, and did some great stuff on stage. And now he's got some interesting new thoughts about the role of free goods in the digital economy. Uh, he's one of the world's leading experts on the impact of technology on the economy. So, uh, Eric, please come out and uh, let us hear what you got to say, man. Okay. See you. So we've heard from Dave and from the other speakers about all the astonishing technologies that are changing our economy and our society. And, uh, and like most of you, I'm sure, I'm quite convinced that we are in the midst of a major technological revolution. And it's quite astonishing, not just what's already happened, but the next 10 years are likely to hold even bigger things in store. However, if you look at the official government statistics, GDP, for instance, you'd find that the information sector, the part where we think most of this innovation is concentrated, all these digital goods, we'd, you'd find that that sector officially hasn't grown at all. It's the same as what it was in the 1960s. Now, how can that be? Obviously, there's some major measurement problems in the way we keep our statistics. And that's a real problem because, as the saying goes, you can't manage what you don't measure. And we are missing more and more of the economy, more and more of what matters in the economy. When the presidential uh, candidates debate and talk about the growth in the economy, or what's happening to productivity, they're relying on these statistics. They're referring to these statistics that miss this big revolution that we're all talking about here. So we need to come up with a better way of measuring things, and that's something we've been working with at the MIT Center for Digital Business. Now, if you look at some of the things that have been happening, um, there's just been an explosion of digital goods. We've all used Wikipedia, which, of course, is free. Um, and People spend several hundred million hours um, developing those um, articles and reading them, of course. And there's a whole slew of other digital goods. YouTube, uh, people spend more time on that than they do on the major television networks. Um, Facebook, Pandora, MapQuest, search engines, blogs, all these things, they have several things in common. One is that they are digital goods delivered through the internet and increasingly mobile devices. And that means that the marginal cost of delivering them is pretty close to zero. That once you've developed them, making them available to one more user is very, very close to zero. And in turn, not surprisingly, the economic model for most of them is to, in fact, deliver them for free. In some cases, they fund them through advertising. In many other cases, users just contribute the time. They develop them, and then they make them available and maybe there's a little bit of contributions or advertising that pays for some of the bandwidth, but those costs are relatively minimal. A third thing they have in common is that most of them were just developed in the past 10 years, and almost all of them within the past 15 years. And there's just been an explosion of the availability of these goods, and that means we are spending and consuming spending more and more of our time and consuming more and more of these goods than before. We've more than doubled the amount of time we spend on these goods in the past five years. Now, it's not just in the United States, of course. It's a worldwide phenomenon. We referred to that uh, prototypical boy in, uh, in Africa who now has more access to information, as Ray Kurzweil was saying, than the President of the United States did 10 years ago, or a girl in India, or really uh, uh, men, women, and children all over the world. And this is a little map of the information flows, all the free information flowing across the world, across the oceans, and all the hot spots on the continents. And you also could, you could measure, you count the number of bits produced, you could count the number of articles produced, and those have grown tenfold since 2004 in, in the case of Wikipedia. Um, but what we want to know is not just the number of bits, we want to know the amount of value. What is the actual value? And this is where the bug in the GDP occurs, because GDP measures total amount spent on goods and services, the total amount spent. So what happens if the price is free, the price is zero? Well, zero times any quantity is still zero. So you could have an enormous explosion of bits or articles or whatever else. If they're priced at zero, the statisticians in Washington do the math, and lo and behold, it comes out as a big fat zero contribution to our GDP. So 
the traditional metrics are really missing what's going on in the economy and missing this information economy because it's a digital economy and largely a free economy. So how can we measure it? Um, well, there are a number of other ways of going about measuring it. One is to look at the time that people spend, um, and that is something that we do. Because if, if you just look at the dollars, you're going to get a sense that actually the economy is, is stagnant or even shrinking. I mean, take a look at what's happened to the music industry. Um, the amount of music being downloaded is growing quite rapidly, but the dollars spent on the music industry is shrinking. It's disappearing from the economic statistics. Now, that doesn't mean that all of us are listening to less music or we have less music available. If anything, most of us have more music available than ever before, and people have looked even at the quality and, and variety of music. Joel Walfogel, for instance, has found that that has grown as well. But the music industry in GDP statistics is shrinking, as are many other information-based industries. The increased amount of time, however, I think is another way of getting at how we are consuming these goods, because there's different ways you can pay for something. You can pay for something with dollars, but you can pay for something with anything else that has value as well. And when you choose to spend time on consuming a good, you are paying for that. You are paying a piece of your life. You are paying attention, if you will. And that is something that is uh, in finite quantity. And if you use it for one good, if you use it to consume YouTube or Facebook, that means it's not available for earning money or for fixing your house or for consuming some other type of leisure good. And this is basically the nub of a way that you can go about measuring the value of all these free goods. And that's what we do, is we calculate the demand curve for information goods, not based on the dollars spent, but based on the time spent. And if you look at the area under that demand curve, it will give you a calculation of the total surplus, the total consumer surplus that you capture. If you are willing to spend a certain amount, but you only have to spend a smaller amount, the difference between those is a surplus measure, the consumer surplus you capture. Obviously, if the good is free, that surplus potentially could be quite large, even though the dollar spent on it is quite small. And this is a very different approach than the traditional GDP accounting, but it's one that we think captures better the real value that goods and services are producing in the economy, especially when you look at not the dollar spent, but the time spent. So actually implementing this is a little bit complicated. You have to do a few equations, and that's what Juhi O, oh, my postdoc at MIT, and I worked through. I won't go through all of these today, but if you want, you can read the paper. Um, but I'll get you to the bottom line. And basically, after you do the math and you plug in the numbers, what it turns out is that the annual welfare gain from all these free goods is about $300 billion. Now, that's the average over the past 10 years or so, $300 billion. That's that top uh, left number there. And uh, that works out to about $1,400 per person. So I don't know whether you think it's a large number or a small number, but it's certainly bigger than zero. And it, it's not enough that we can all retire, but it tells you something about what's happening in the economy and how much value is being created. Another thing you can look at is the change in consumer surplus from one year to the next. And this is perhaps a more relevant one. It tells you something about the growth of the economy. So, even in a recession, people are getting more and more free goods available to them, and even in a slump. So the actual increase in the value from these free goods is a positive number. It turns out that over the past 10 years, it's averaged about 34 billion. In the past year or two, it's been 40 to 50 billion dollars per year. And again, just to put that in perspective, that works out to be about a quarter of a percent of GDP. And maybe people don't think that sounds like a very large number, but I just want to calibrate a little bit for you. Uh, total productivity growth in the economy has been averaging about 1% per year. So this is equal to about a quarter of the total productivity growth in all the industries in the economy put together. And it's growing fairly rapidly so that soon it'll be closer to half of all the productivity growth just from these free goods on the internet. Now, you can also calibrate it in other things. I mean, once we did this study, we realized that there are other free goods out there. There's a really big one that actually people spend far more time on, maybe not in this room, but in, in, in the United States, which is um, television. There's about 200 billion hours a year spent on television. So we used the same model to calibrate for television. And what we found was that, lo and behold, television creates even more uh, value for most Americans than the internet. And that's simply a function of them choosing to spend time. They have a choice each day. They spend about um, 30 hours a week um, 
or 30 hours a month on uh, the internet, but about 30 hours a week on television. So there's a, they're voting with their feet or voting with their hours on that. Although if you look at towards the end there, what you see is that the value that television is adding has leveled off and has started to fall a bit. And the value that's added by the internet has been growing. So right now, in terms of contributions to growth, GDP contributions from digital goods and the internet is greater than from television. And if we extrapolate, we see those lines crossing within the next decade or so in terms of the total value. So the bottom line is that the value of all these free goods is about $300 billion in 2011. You have to measure it in terms of time, not money. If you look at the dollar value, it turns out to be a much smaller value, but that's because it's not, we're not counting the real way that people are paying for this. Furthermore, that value is increasing quite rapidly and at an increasing rate. It's about $40 billion of additional growth every year that doesn't show up in our GDP or productivity statistics. That's because there are more users every year. Each user is spending more hours. The value of each hour, according to our model, is growing. And all of those things, you put them together, and they lead to an increasing value of these goods. And finally, you can kind of calibrate it with what's happening with television, and you find that TV is still a bigger chunk of value, but the internet is catching up rapidly. So the bottom line, I think, is that we have definitely had a revolution in technology and the digital goods and the way the economy works, and more and more of it is these free goods. We've been talking a little bit about a revolution in management and strategy to take advantage of that. We also, I think, need a revolution in measurement. We need to rethink the way we measure the economy because if we don't measure the economy to take into account these free goods, we'll eventually miss more and more of what's really happening in the economy. Thanks. If you want to read more about it, it's available for free on my website. Thanks very much for giving me a chance to share some of the research.